Hey guys, Glenn here. In this video, we're going to be going over how I find my STLs to sell online and then how I put them on Etsy. So you're going to learn some about SEO. So I do pretty well. Uh, we Right now we're about $43,000, something like that, uh, since we started maybe eight months ago. So I'm going to go through the process step by step so you guys can do it too and make a boatload of cash. Now, this is an update video. Um, I am getting emails, comments, everybody asking why I took down that video. That was one of my most popular videos and probably how you guys found me. That video was super outdated. It had some information in there that was not correct, uh, you know, from what I've learned in my experience. So this is going to be an updated video, of the streamlined process of how I do it. Let's dive into it. Now, I do like to update um, every time I make a video about my Etsy, uh, which I do have another Etsy channel if you guys want to subscribe to that, that goes more into the Etsy things rather than the 3D printing things. However, this is an update of how the Etsy shop is doing. Uh, yesterday we made $420 um, all time so far. We're at $42,800 in revenue, um, which take about 10% of that out for, for cost. Now, now we're exponentially getting more views, more sales. I mean, we're up to 200,000 total views uh, and half of that is visits. So that means that my pictures are, are doing pretty well too. Now this video isn't gonna be really a to totally about just the Etsy shop. This is gonna be how to start, take your SDLs, find them, take them from the site. Um, you guys should know now how to print them out, but I will go through the whole entire process of putting it on Etsy. Um, show you how I do it so that you could be successful as well. Okay, so this is Thingiverse.com. If you guys haven't been here yet and you're 3D printing, you really need to. Um, it's right now probably the most popular website. There are a lot of other ones which I'll go into other videos, but this one, just to show you the process, I'm going to go uh, from where I started was Thingiverse. Now, they have a ton of STLs. You could find just about anything to sell on here, and it's legal, as far as I know. Now, disclaimer, I am not an attorney, so get your own attorney if you're worried about doing any of this. I'm just some random dude on YouTube. So ideally, you want to search, if you can, by license type. Thingiverse is not a good website, uh, but it has amazing models on there. There's a lot of them. Um, but uh, a lot of people, for this reason, has been going to other websites, like, like Prusa's website, but... Um, if you, if this does work for you, it'd be a lot easier to find the models. However, you don't need to do this process because you can just scroll down and click and I'll show you in a second. So you want to go to license type and you want to find attribution, creative commons attribution or share alike. Um, the non-commercials, non-commercial share alike, um, stuff like that. You know, these ones are, 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 you can't sell. Okay. The artist or the creator. Um, has said, I don't want you to sell this and make money on it. So I'll show you what it looks like. Public domain, you can do it. But ideally, most of what you're going to find uh, is going to be attribution, Creative Commons attribution, or Creative Commons attribution share alike. So let's see if this filter worked. It did not. So, we just search anything like, um, let's try to find like a holder. It'd be a lot easier. Kitty phone holder. Let's see. Look at that. So now you scroll down and it says license, Creative Commons, attribution, share alike. So the share alike is just if you do change the model, you have to share it again. Now, pretty cool phone holder by uh, Tiny Eyes. You can see that it's popular because it has a lot of makes, a uh, bunch of remixes. So you might find remixes that do it better or bigger or in a different way that might be another version to sell. But you can sell this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to download this catstand.stl. Okay. It's downloaded. Let's open it up. Open up Prusa Slicer here. Okay. And just like this, slice it. And it's going to cost you 43 cents to make these things. You could sell it for 12, 13, $15 sometimes. Um, I would probably be at like the $9.99 range. Uh, but let's put it up online and see how it does. 
All right, here we are at uh, create a loon listing. Um, you know, a lot of times I copy my listings if they're very similar to the other ones. That's going to save you a lot of time. Now, first, we're going to put a picture up here. Um, I'll let you guys, you know, print it out, do your own pictures. I recommend a photo booth. I do have a video on that on the other channel, my Etsy channel, about my photo booth. It's a 2x2, two two, which I really, really recommend because it uh, makes your pictures amazing. So all it's going to cost you is 43 cents to print this out and take a picture. All you got to do is really one color to start, but you could do, if you really want to make a lot of sales on this, you could do like four different colors or all the different colors or whatever. There's a lot of different ways that you can promote this product, but at least get one photo up there or a couple photos, like fill out like six to 10 photos of the product in the, what you think is probably going to be the most popular color, which is probably black. Uh, that's usually what I do, or I'll do like a gold if it's like a, a statue or something or a dog or whatever. So put the picture up. We're not going to do that now. I also recommend doing a video. Uh, you're going to get better SEO from it and you're going to um, have someone really understand exactly what it is. Um, I put it on this little rotating stand that I also made a review on my Etsy channel about that it's like 15 bucks or $12 for this little stand, but it rotates. It works for most of my stuff because it's small. Um, so for such a cheap little stand, you press the button, it goes. You take the pictures, you put the rotating stand in the photo booth, and then you, you take a you know about an eight, nine second video of it spinning around. Um, and it seems to get more sales because people understand completely 100% what that is. Now take different angles, um, Maybe put a little prop in there, a little plant in the background. Um, just make sure that you put like, if it's not obvious, plant is not included, you know. Now we're going to go to title. So um, this is a kitty phone holder. So kitty phone holder. And then you could put um, desktop organization, something like that. All right. You can fill out all of this title if you want, because it's going to key on all those keywords. However, it might confuse the algorithm. So lately I've been doing shorter titles that have say exactly what it is um, with maybe just one thing. Like if I'm selling spoons or something, I'll say kitchen essentials or kitchen products or whatever at the end. Kitchen gifts. You get the idea. So we're going to go kitty phone holder, desktop organization. Now who made it? I did. Um, what is it? Finished product made to order. Okay. These three are you going to do if you have a 3d printing business, it shouldn't really be anything else. Um, unless you are pre making them, which it makes no sense because the best thing about a 3d printing business is that you have no inventory. Now, uh, the category phone, Phone holders, cat. Um, and then the, we'll find the best one. Ideally, in this category, what you want to find is where it fits in, but where it has the most categories. So, like, if it fit into candlestick holders, for instance, you wouldn't want it in the desktop storage. Uh, let's just say they both kind of made sense for the product. You would want it in candlestick holders because it's got more sections that it can be found in. Okay. But this is going to be docking stands, electronics, accessories. Um, that is probably the best thing for this one specifically. Now, uh, primary color, you're going to choose this color if it, if you're only selling black or only selling white or whatever. But what I do is actually I add my colors. Um, so, you know, you could sell, start off selling like five different colors. If you don't have a lot of money for filament, um, sell three different colors or whatever. You know, you, the, the, the point is to start, you could sell just black things, everything black. And then you have no inventory besides just black rolls of filament. Uh, and just make sure you only sell PLA. So I always leave that blank unless it's just one color and it only makes sense to have one color or like a, a primary color and a secondary color. Now, renewal options. I don't make them renew automatic and I have hundreds and hundreds of listings, so it does get a little tedious. However, um, if something doesn't sell uh, in the time that you put the, put the listing up, obviously I have to change something. So I put it on manual because I'll see that it's deactivated 
and it gives me a chance to look it over like are my pictures not right what am I what did I mess up in the listing Did I charge too much whatever it is I can adjust it and then put it right back out it only takes a couple minutes per one that comes across and you know I might get you know five ten a day sometimes sometimes even more but it's worth it to, to review these because you don't want things automatically renewing for years and paying this fee when it never sold in the first place. As well, it takes down your conversion rate too, which is not good for your Etsy shop. So I always put it on manual. I probably will never do automatic. Now, is it a physical or digital item? You, you're selling a physical item. So that's pretty obvious. Um, description. This awesome kitty phone holder is the perfect gift for any cat lover and then you could put you know comes in black white and green whatever um, and then a little bit of information about your shop at the end uh, and then I'm gonna show you what we need to do for attribution. So going back to this, um, you're going to see in the license, you're going to go to, um, you know, always save this so you, so you can go back to it. You're going to see down here in license, um, it's, this is the license that you have to um, paste in the bottom of your, the bottom of your description. So let's just take this, copy and paste it. And then you're going to go to source, copy this. So you're going to go attributions, source, boom. You can either do it like that or you could do um, my last video. I used to do um, attribution, source, kitty phone holder, um, made by. Um, and then you want to tighten it up like this. Tiny eyes, boom. Share like license. So um, that's the minimum of what you should say. Um, so that's the attribution so that you can legally sell this as far as I know. Now you don't want a very short description uh, because Google does crawl these descriptions. So um, you want to put other cat things in here. You want to say something about your shop like my 3d prints take about you know two to five days to complete stuff like that but I'll let you guys decide on what you want to do because it's your shop specifically uh, but you want to put a little bit of a professional look on it that tells them what it's made out of now uh, production partners you only need to do this if like let's say someone else is making your stuff for you um, you have to include this if this is the case because if they find out they're gonna shut down your shop So I've never needed to because I produce everything myself So the sections you're gonna create sections which I can go on another video um, how to create sections But you're gonna put it in, in this in like um, you know uh, electronic section or Phone holders if you only sell phone holders or there's a lot of different ways you could do sections in your shop I'll go over that in a separate video it's really, really not gonna have enough time in this video, but uh, subscribe if you wanna see that. Now, tags. Tags are very important, and a lot of people completely do them wrong. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do them right. So, what we're gonna do is kitty phone holder, okay? Um, you can only fit so many letters into a tag. However, um, it doesn't matter as much if it's in order or if it makes any sense because the way that Etsy works is it pulls kitty and then let's say um, cat lovers phones um, it'll pull kitty and cat and put those two together or kitty lovers and put those things two things together um, and you might even be on the first page. Okay, so a lot of people think that you just have to put like one word or You have to put them in order and make it have it make sense. It doesn't okay You can make it very confusing sounding and still get a lot of views. So let's continue this Let's say, you know, if you spelled things differently like cat 
a lot of people say it doesn't matter, but I always spell different things or like if it's an easy misspelling like kitty, just put it in there. All right. Now let's put cats, lover. Um, if it's going to be only, you're only selling black, let's put black in there because people are looking specifically for black things. Um, if you do only sell black, that's really needed because uh, you're going to, people are going to see that as black and it's going to match their decor that they're looking for. Um, and it's a cat and it holds a phone and that's what you really want to do. Now you want holds, holder, hold, uh, desktop, desk, desks, office. Uh, what else? Let's see. You could just like think of things off your head that are related to this, but you don't want to like, let's say you put cow in there. That's going to really mess you up because people are going to search for cows, see this, and then they're going to not even click on it. And then Etsy's going to say, wow, well, why, why would I ever show this to someone if it doesn't sell? So just make sure that everything that you put in here has something to do with the product, if not exactly the product. Now, you don't have to fill all these up, but they do say use all 13 tags to get found. That's what I do every time. Um, I have experimented with this in the past, the not filling it completely, and it actually worked pretty good, if not better sometimes, but I don't really see a difference too much. You're probably better off just listening to Etsy, especially since they change things all the time. Just use the 13 tags because you're going to have more of availability of these keywords coming up and, and then finding your stuff. Now, what other words can we do? Kitty. Um, you know, iPhone, uh, Android, tablet, tablets. You can also look at their tags that they put on their listing for the STL. Uh, which some of them have a lot of listings, some of them have none, but we already put cat, iPhone, and phone holder up, so we're not going to be able to use that. Let's do like iPhones, um, smart, the smartphone, your rack racks, cute, adorable, gift gifts, kitties, kitten, Kittens, and then, let's see, there's one more to go. Uh, home decor. Now, uh, with the materials, it's optional. You don't have to put anything in there, but you don't want them to be expecting a metal phone holder when it's going to be a plastic one. So I usually put, um, you know, 3D printed plastic, um, if you want to be completely honest, or you could put plastic. That will ensure that they know exactly what they're getting because you don't want people getting something and then be like, wait a minute, I thought this was, you know, metal or wood or whatever. Just make sure that whatever you're selling is completely honest to the person and you and you express to them, this is what you're getting because that's the most important thing because uh, you won't keep on getting sales if you lie at all or fib or don't show the complete product. You want to show the front, you want to show the back, you want to show the sides. Just be honest. Okay, now price. I would do, you know, just, you could start at like $5.99. Um, and then, like, let's say you have no sales, okay? You should be selling things for free and not making any money at first. Just to get some good reviews. And then you're going to go probably to $9.99. And then once you get to my level that you got 16 printers and you can't even handle all the work you got, um, you're going to go to like $12.99 or $14.99 and only do sales once in a while. So right now we'll start, I'm, I'm assuming that you're like pretty new. So let's do 599 to start quantity. You could do, um, you know, I usually at nowadays, if it's something like this, I just do like 99 or you could do 999. You do 999 so that you, you, uh, you know, you never have to renew it. Um, if, if it is selling, uh, cause eventually believe it or not, I have put things to 99 or 100 quantity and it sells out in a month and I have to renew it and then it will let you know that you're out of stock. But the thing is, though, some people might want five of those items or three of those items. You only have one. Now, if you only put one, for instance, um, this is going to show that in your Etsy shop, it'll say hurry up one available or two available or three available. Um, so by now, which would be in red letters and it really, 
it might force them to be like, oh, I better buy this now. I usually don't do something like that with this. I would do it with like a, you know, like a really quality item, like a statue or something like that. But that option is available for you. Just stay aware that that is a thing. Now, SKU numbers. I'm going to make another separate video about SKU numbers. It's very, it could be very easy or it could be very complicated. I feel like this is very needed for you guys uh, to keep accurate records and to be able to print fast and all these other things. Uh, know exactly what product because it also has to do with other websites too. So it's not just about Etsy. But let's just say this is your first one. You're going to do SKU number one. Okay. You know, start there. We'll expand into it in other videos. It might even be up right now. So go look. Uh, by the time you watch this, I might have already made the video. So now allow restock requests. This is only an option if you're an Etsy Plus member. Uh, if you're subscribed to that, it's like $10 a month. So you probably wouldn't have this. And I don't recommend when you first open Etsy to have the Etsy Plus. It doesn't really make too much sense. Um, it's only $10 a month, but it's really like $2 a month after after you're very active in your shop, putting things up all the time, you you get discounts and stuff like that. So it gives you certain things, and this is one of them, so that your your so that your customers can see that it's out of stock and request it to be back in stock. Um, I don't think it's a very big deal, at least for what I do. Um, I always put yes. I don't know why I would not want them to request restocking, um, but. Just be aware, you're not going to have that unless you buy Etsy Plus. Now, variations. This is how you create variation. Um, for instance, primary color is what you would do for in this situation if you want to do a lot of different colors for this one unit. Now, all, they make it pretty easy for you if you have just regular, like, you don't want to do like violet and magenta for this, for instance. You just want like one purple, one black, one blue. So you're just going to go click. Oops. I don't do any beige. These are the colors that I do because it's easy to hit. Um, gold, gray, pink, orange, purple, green, silver, yellow, white. Okay. Um, now, if you need to do something like marble, for instance, which is one that I offer in my shop, you could do marble. Okay. Create new option. Add it. Now marble is right there. Now, if you primarily want to sell a specific color, all right, I want to sell mostly black because it's the easiest to print. White sucks because white is, it just takes a little speck to get it dirty. So sometimes I don't even like selling it, but I've learned um, how to make my printers print without making too many mistakes, like little black marks on the white. But I put white down here so that it's harder to find. So they see Honestly, I'll put black here. I'll put marble up here because I like I like printing marble because it's easy. It's the imperfections are hidden by the marble. Uh, it is more expensive uh, generally, um, but it's less post processing in the end. So generally, I just do like black first, then marble, um, and then you know the rest is up to you depending on if you like doing specific colors. You don't have to do all these colors, and I don't recommend you start doing that because you're going to get orders for 30 of an item, and you're not going to have enough filament. And you need to make sure that whatever date you say you're going to send it, you're going to send it. So let's save and continue. Now make sure this is not marked. Quantities vary for each color. Unmark that. Update. So now you can see all the colors we offer. Personalization. You can do this if you're doing a custom item. Like let's say it's a nameplate for a desk. And... Um, I do a couple custom items, but once you get to like where I am in size, you're not going to want to do that because it, it takes too much time out of your day. You want to be just mass producing things and be able to teach somebody else that's working for you that, you know, this is what you do and it's just repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. If you have to teach someone a new thing every day, which is like, you know, I have other businesses. So like my construction business is very difficult to manage because some guys do plumbing, some guys do electrical, some guys do sheetrock, some guys do painting, and then they don't do, the painter doesn't do the sheetrock, and the sheetrock doesn't do the painter, and it's very confusing to run that business. So you want to make this as streamlined as possible. But I'm going into the tangent now. So next thing, personalization, I wouldn't offer this for this product, obviously. Um, now shipping, um, I have a lot of different shipping profiles. 
If you have any questions about shipping, comment down below because there's a lot to it. The reason why I mainly sell the fixed price um, domestic, and don't worry about this, Etsy thinks you're shipping too much. I, I don't care. Um, it doesn't affect my shop. But right now I'm doing fixed price domestic. You can also do like this is if you want to sell to USA and Canada. Um, only specific things I would want to sell to Canada, like anything that's too heavy or um, I might get into, uh, into a problem with shipping it over there. You don't want to ship it to Canada because it's got to go through customs and it's very expensive to ship to Canada. Very expensive. So any of my advertised listings, I do fixed price domestic because you don't want to be advertising to Canada because their, their conversion rate is going to be so much less because who wants a $5 item and pay $25 shipping? It's ridiculous. So I do sell to Canada. However, it's got to be in that sweet spot. So um, we'll go into shipping in another video, but you want to create your shipping profile. And the easiest way is just either do free shipping, which I have a video about that. If you want to look that up, that, you know, the benefits of free shipping versus having your customer pay for shipping. But this is what I do right now. I will change it back and forth. I'll go up, I'll go down. Um, I'll always experiment with my shop to see, is this making it better? Is it making it worse? Um, and then I'll give it 15 days or 30 days, maybe a month to show me, am I increasing in sales or am I decreasing in sales? So I just do fixed domestic pricing uh, for, for this one, for instance, and then don't sell to Canada because they're not gonna want a five to $10 item usually it's 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 a harder sale tariff items don't worry about that unless you're shipping out of the country item weight now if you're doing fixed price domestic you don't have to fill any of this in but if you ever want to change your profile to automatically calculate which is where i started you're going to want to put what it weighs so this is going to automatically calculate um so you want to you want to upshoot a little bit so if it's five ounces put six ounces all right, um, and then the box, um, like this will fit in a five by five by five box. So it's gonna give you a shipping preview of what it would cost, the total price, for instance, of what they're gonna see um, in the United States. Upgrades, you can also upgrade to Express for an extra $5. It's part of my shipping profile because some people want it like the next day and people actually do purchase it. Uh, so I actually make a little more money on the upgrades. Now we go to returns and exchanges. My shop, I do not re let any returns happen. They're custom made items specifically for the person when they order it. Um, I don't need no inventory. So only if a customer is really upset and I made a mistake and didn't really uh, describe the item correctly, I let them send it back or I just give them the money back um, if they complain. Because you don't really want one star reviews. And then down here in marketing, yes, advertise this listing or maybe later. Click maybe later. Um, I wouldn't advertise this listing. That's more for another video. Advertising is extremely complicated. I only advertise certain things. Now you click publish and it's up. Hopefully this helped you guys out to get started with your Etsy 3D printing business. You know, I started it. It was really fun. It's something that I can do because I work from home nowadays and I run multiple businesses. And this is just another thing that I just got to click buttons. And, and it's pretty easy once you set it up uh, to make extra money. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. Hopefully I covered everything. Uh, but I mean, there's only so much you can cover in a video. So if you got any value out of this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you like making money with a 3D printer. Watch this video next and have a great day.